progress by experiment is the way of aviation, and the latest news is a double or composite aircraft. This long-range seaplane, now nearing completion, will not be able to rise from the water by its own power when fully loaded, so it will be rigidly attached by means of their struts on top to the auxiliary aircraft, which is similar to the now famous Empire flying boats. In the dual takeoff, the auxiliary will be flying light, so that the eight engines will get the two machines into the air. At a suitable height, the seaplane is released and flies on its journey, while the flying boat comes down again. That's the theory anyway, and we'll be showing you before long how the short male composite aircraft works in practice. When you see the flying boat Meyer and the seaplane Mercury on the water together, you know that the short male experiment is almost ready to be made. But first, the test flights of the Mercury. She is the seaplane which, when heavily loaded with fuel for transatlantic flight, will be helped into the air on the back of the Meyer. Meanwhile, the Mercury spreads her wings alone. Maya and Mercury are at last linked together in preparation for a trial flight, when Mercury, the upper machine, too heavily loaded to rise herself, will take off by the power of eight engines and be released in mid-air to continue her flight alone. Episode 3 in the story of the composite aircraft experiment, to be continued. At Rochester, the story of the short male composite plane continued. You've already seen pictures of the Meyer and Mercury, partners in a spectacular experiment. Here you may witness their marriage. Mercury is a smaller machine being fixed on top of Meyer. They are joined by a secret hooking process. Movie Turn watches closely as two pilots and eight engines take this strange double plane into the air. Future interest now lies in the theory of their separation or divorce in the sky. At a given height and speed, the lower pilot will release a lever. Then the upper pilot will release him, but the planes still remain linked until aerodynamic force automatically separates them, and the Mercury will then proceed on her Atlantic voyage. That's the theory, soon to be put into practice. So good luck to the experiment another day. Aviation, the miracle of the 20th century, loses a new sensation on the world, the composite plane which splits in the air. You have met the Meyer before, you have met the Mercury, you have been introduced to their two courageous test pilots, Parker on the left and Piper, and you have seen the two planes fly together as a composite crowd. But never yet, before the release of this film, have you witnessed a genuine picture of the actual parting. There's a slight mist on the midway, but grand conditions up above, on the day when the short male people carry out their promise to repeat for press and newsreel the experiment which they successfully achieved in secret a fortnight earlier. So sit back and watch the amazing phenomenon and enjoy the suspense of waiting for it. All over in a few seconds. Fewer in fact than it took to see it, for that was slow motion taken by Jack Cotter. Aerodynamics separate the planes after the levers have been released, and the lower machine mire dips and sweeps downward to the river. But what happens to Mercury? We'll join the two craft together again and watch the parting with big lenses from the ground. Mercury soars aloft, and with the two planes diverging naturally, it seems that the risk of accident in Major Mayer's invention must be small. Listen to the triumphant sound of the engines as they roar past. separation is achieved by two levers. The pilot of the lower machine sits at his wheel. Then, after a telephone conversation with his partner, he pulls down his release lever. But still the machines are locked. Not until the pilot of the upper machine moves his lever are they ready to be disengaged. And even then they fly on together until aerodynamics separate them. Watch the performance again from a distant view, such as the human eye at Rochester might have seen. When the levers have been released, a very light is fired as a signal to the cameras and then the wind and gravity do the rest.
Only the future can disclose the benefits of this spectacular invention. Its potentialities are obvious for long-distance flights. It may have other applications, opening a new and fascinating prospect in the realm of aviation. Meyer and Mercury having split successfully, the two pilots talk it over. Parker of the lower machine addressing Piper. When we left the water, I didn't uh, expect we were going to do the parting, but everything was going right, so I very quickly asked you your opinion. And you seemed quite content with anything I wanted to do. So I uh, pulled the plug and you disappeared. I don't know what sort of a feeling you had. And I can tell you that I was very relieved to hear your engines getting quieter. That was my only guy. Congratulations to the piggyback plane. Years of faith and months of hope, now brilliantly justified. Here is a scene of finds as Mercury breaks the surface of the Shannon. Then comes Maya, her part the less heroic of the two. Though without her added lift, Mercury's large load of petrol could never be launched into the air. The two crews, Captain Wilcoxon of Maya in the centre, on the right, Captain Bennett and Mr. Costa, pilot and wireless operator of Mercury. In the quiet estuary where the government of Vera has constructed a terminal port for Atlantic crossings, the two planes are joined together for the critical flight. The date has been chosen so that Mercury may carry with her newspapers and newsreels of the royal visit to France for distribution in Canada and America. Movie Turns film is handed in. Then the composite plane turns into the wind. The eight engines gather speed and Myers keel lifts off the water. Pictures of today shown in America tomorrow. Will the wonders of this 20th century never cease? The separation is successfully accomplished and away wings Mercury and her... Mercury's flight is now aviation history, but although she's back in England, there is still interest in the picture of her landing at Montreal. One of the incidental benefits of the transatlantic air service is that it will draw together the ties of Canada and the mother country, as well as of Britain and America. Seaplanes and flying boats will arrive in the St. Lawrence with the same ease as on the Hudson River, so Captain Bennett, as he steps ashore at Montreal, is the messenger of empire unity, just as much as of Anglo-American cordiality. Mercury's pilot is home. And small daughter wanted to be in the picture when Captain Bennett talked to Movitone about his flight. The reception of the first commercial load to arrive in America uh, was uh, very enthusiastic, both in Montreal and New York. The um, trip itself was quite uneventful, being in no way a stunt flight, an ordinary commercial flight. I myself am particularly happy to have done my share in the, this attempt to put the Atlantic flight on a commercial basis. The same gale has been postponing Mercury's departure to South Africa. From the Firth of Tay, where the composite plane has been lying, it is hoped to launch the small seaplane on a record flight to Cape Town, approximately 6,400 miles away. The record would be for the longest distance in a straight line. Good luck to her in her undertaking, when weather permits. Aviation also hits the headlines when Captain Bennett goes out to board Mercury, the top half of the composite plane. Together, Mercury and Maya take off from Dundee. Mercury, with a full load of petrol, is expected to cover a distance of not less than 6,400 miles, and she rises with the parent ship slowly from the water. The split proves as successful as all their previous partings, and for Mercury, the next stop should have been Cape Town. Headwinds over Africa, however, and shortage of fuel, robbed her of the longest ever flight record by some 400 miles. But she wins the seaplane long distance record from Germany.